Hello! So today we are going to be starting the week of Insular, which is something I mentioned I was going to be doing on my Who Is She video, where this week you'll be getting three videos on the last three Vinsler books that I read. And today we're going to be starting with the vagina monologues. Right off the bat, I want to talk about the trans exclusiveness, the cis sexism in this book, uh, with particular reference to a video that Anna did, which will be, of course, linked below. In the introduction, she notes the lack of trans voices and the lack of narratives or monologues having to do with menstruation. Her justification for this, or the reason she says that this is a thing, is because of she just happened to not attract those voices and narratives because the way that she describes and I guess her methodology for how she did this book is that she basically ended up receiving all of these stories from people and she shaped them into the monologues that she performed and the vagina monologues was actually done for the Bangin book club uh, which is run by Hannah, Lucy, Lena um, and I think it was the first book that they did, maybe, and I haven't actually watched those videos um, because I was planning on doing this week much earlier in the year and a lot of the time when I'm reviewing books I just kind of want to get out like all of my thoughts on it and then I'll do research later like for my own benefit, I guess. Um, so I still haven't watched those videos, um, but Anna's video was in response to their videos and so one of the things that uh, she talked about was how that it was noted, said there was an exclusion of trans voices, but it seemed to be understood that the exclusion was at the fact that there was the um, lack of discussion around like any kind of transition or like acquiring of a vagina, um, but beyond that, you know, everyone has a vagina and it's all good. However, like Anna, while I was reading this book, I was like, that's not how it works at all because there's no discussion of non-binary, gender non-conforming, gender variant, um, or trans masculine people. Something else that Anna mentioned in her video uh, was the amount of reductivist and essentialist language that is used when talking about women exclusively and their vaginas. One instance of really essentialist language that's used is um, there's one monologue that's happening in a vagina workshop where basically women go, they learn about their vaginas. Okay. So there's the instructor and then the person, the narrator, um, who's experiencing it. So she told me my clitoris was not something I could lose. It was me, the essence of me. It was both the doorbell to my house and the house itself. I didn't have to find it. I had to be it. Just so you know, your vagina is not the essence of you, okay? Like, just know that, please. And again, like Anna mentioned, this book deals with vaginas just confined and restricted to discussions of sex and that healing and feminism come through connecting with your vagina. Not really here for that because that excludes a lot of people's experiences and orientations. Not okay. To be fair, like Insler has experienced uh, sexualized trauma in her own life, right? Like she is a victim of incest you in sexual violence, uh, being sexually abused by her father, um, and she's involved in a lot of activist work and working uh, with so many different people and survivors of so many different things. It's important to respect, you know, her own life experiences and how she might connect with her own healing and her own body and sexuality and all of that. Something else that I have huge issues with, there are some things I did like, we'll talk about it in a second, um, is the fact when, like, white cis feminists um, the way that they talk about how they don't like the word vagina because the first thing I actually read about that was in Catelyn Moran's book How to Be a Woman which is a book that I love although not without criticism where yeah like Catelyn is specifically talking about how she just hates the word vagina it's a medical word it's a gross word blah 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 and that always struck me as like okay like it's I mean I personally I like the word vagina I'm cool with it so that might just be part of that but in this book I think brought out why I dislike uh, that discussion and it's because people like this don't like the word vagina specifically because it's unsexy to quote this so you don't think I'm making it up uh, this is specifically what she says as part of the introduction 
Let's just start with the word vagina. It sounds like an infection at best, maybe a medical instrument. Hurry nurse, bring me the vagina. Vagina, vagina, doesn't matter how many times you say it, it never sounds like a word you want to say. It's totally ridiculous, completely unsexy word. If you use it during sex, trying to be politically correct, Darling, could you stroke my vagina? You kill the act right there. Such a clear example of what Anna was saying about restricting and confining a discussion about vagina having to be in a sexualized context. Insler is saying that she's committed to doing all of this work around alleviating the taboo, the way that we don't talk about vaginas, and like I get there's like the medical misogyny and like all this stuff, like I totally, like I understand it. Um, but to me, disliking the word vagina because it's not sexy is just internalized misogyny because, like, my vagina, the word is gross because it's not sexy. It is not a thing to be discussed and talk about because the word makes it unsexy. Like, do you see where I'm getting at? It did make me think about my vagina. And there was also lots of little monologues about where there'll just be a question posed as the title of the monologue and then a series of answers like, what would your vagina say? What do vaginas smell like? I thought it was interesting to think about it that way and to like think of your vagina in like a whole new way. And I understand as, like a lot of stuff about what Ensler is saying like in her introduction about how like people were surprisingly willing to talk about like their vaginas. They wanted to talk about it but it's because we never talk about it because we never ask that we don't. I love talking about vaginas and sex and menstruation and like stuff that we're not supposed to talk about like with my friends. I love these discussions. If you think about it in the context of its time, it gave voice to people, specifically women, about their vaginas. But basically what my criticism boils down to is that it gave voice within a very limited and specific narrative. Another thing about representation and having a multitude of voices when we talk about uh, things like this is the fact that I think there is one explicit woman of color. I didn't feel like racial representation was good enough like at all but again she would just use the defense of like oh I just happened to not attract uh, those voices which is kind of like okay. I also think there is a lot of stuff to unpack in regards to Ensler's methodology and her storytelling um, but I want to talk about that more in the next video or the video after that when I talk about I'm an emotional creature because uh, that book infuriated me to no end. Um, so this discussion will kind of continue in conjunction with that book um, but for now that's all I have to say about the vagina monologues. So I don't know. Have you read it? What do you think?